Har vi alla med oss nu? Perfect. So, welcome all to this seminar where Sara Starsjö will defend her licentiate thesis in chemical engineering. The short and concise title on the process development of an ECF light bleaching sequence for the production of high quality softwood craft pulp and low AOX formation. Uh, my name is Don Budund. I'm a professor in analytical chemistry here at Mid Sweden University, and I will act as the chairman of this session. But uh, in the center, of course, Sara Starsjö will be the respondent for today. Uh, at Zoom, we also have the opponent and also the examiner. That is Dr. Helena Håkansson, which is a senior lecturer at the Department of Engineering and Chemical Sciences at Karlstad University. Uh, Sara, she has performed her studies as an industrial doctoral student at SCA. And that, uh, the studies have been performed in collaboration with Mid Sweden University and KTH. Uh, she has to have uh, support during these studies of a supervisor team representing both industry and academia. And the main supervisor is sitting here in the audience today. It's Joa Fiskeri, professor here at Mid Sweden University. Uh, I will just briefly go through the procedure so that we know what will happen here at the stage. And uh, we will start with that Sara Starsjö will give a presentation of her thesis work. After that, we will have a short break. Uh, and when we return, we will have a questioning, starting with the opponent. And hopefully a nice discussion between Helena and Sara. And when the examiner is satisfied, we will go on and open up for questions from all of you uh, attending this seminar. After that, we'll close the public part of this defense and uh, the supervisor and examiner will meet, have a discussion and then come back and announce the result, pass or fail. Uh, and after that, we will have refreshments for the, those of you attending here at a place in, in Sundsvall. So just before starting, Sara, uh, I will have to ask you if there's something you would like to add, if you have found any errors, if there's an errata list or something. Yes, there is an errata list, which mm. I will present in the end of the presentation. Perfect. That's okay. Hmm. Then the floor is yours. Thank you, Don, for the introduction. Uh, I am Sara, and I will now present my licentiate thesis regarding the ECF light bleaching for software craft pulp, which will take around 30 minutes. And this research has been carried out at Mid Sweden University within the Industrial Research Research School, Forik. Uh, I myself have been working as an industrial PhD student at the SEA R&D Center here in Sundsvall. And the thesis includes two papers. The first one was published in Holtzbeschang last year, and the second one was just published or accepted by Nordic Pulp and Paper Research Journal. Here is the outline for the presentation. I will start with introducing some bleaching basics. Then I will go through the research gap, uh, results from papers one and two, and then conclusions and future research. But I want to start with the background and cellulose, that is the main component in the wood fiber uh, with this repeating glucose monomer unit. And the glucose polymers, they bind together with hydrogen bonds into crystalline fibrils, fibrillary ag aggregates uh, that form the base of the cell walls in the wood structure. And between the fibers, there's lignin and hemicellulose that glue together uh, the long fibers into a complex network that uh, give the wood its strong mechanical properties. And the goal of the pulping process, that is to liberate the fibers <clears throat> from this wood matrix. Um, and in chemical pulping, or more spe specifically craft pulping, the goal is to um, 
cook wood chips together with a cooking liquor of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide that are heated together and thereby most of the lignin is dissolved. The pulp that's obtained from this craft pulping is highly colored, which is why there often is a bleaching process that follows. And the purpose of the bleaching of chemical pulp, that is to remove um, the colored structures, uh, the residual lignin, chromophores and extractives to give a bright and clean pulp for products such as printing paper, uh, tissue and packaging board. And preferably this is done with a minimal cost, um, environmental impact and damage to the fibers while preserving a high yield. And this is why you perform bleaching in sequence, alternating be uh, between stages uh, and bleaching chemicals. And in 2019, um, over 72% of the world production of chemical pulp uh, was actually bleached craft pulp, which is a lot. But the fact is that the bleaching uh, processes are often not completely environmentally friendly. Um, it's often costly and it consumes a lot of bleaching chemicals. Um, the production and use of which may negatively affect the environment. Some of the bleaching chemicals, they produce effluent discharges, such as AOX, and um, organic material, chlorinated organic material, and so on. It also consumes water, heat, and electrical energy. So why do we bleach our pulp at all? Well, first of all, uh, the pulp that's, that is obtained is very dark uh, due to chromophores that are uh, formed in the, in the process. Um, so we want to remove these colored structures to uh, uh, get good contrast and readability for printing. We also want a high brightness stability uh, so that the products don't yellow with time. The bleaching process also removes extractives, dots, specks and shives that have taste and give odor um, and can cause allergic reactions, which is not suitable for uh, food packaging or hygiene products. So to summarize, there are many cases when it is uh, necessary to bleach our products, and it's very important to keep developing the processes in order to minimize the environmental impact. And in this research, I have focused on two of the environmental aspects of bleaching. The first one was the effluent discharge of AOX in paper one, and then it was uh, bleachability, which is connected to chemical consumption in paper two. And I want to explain to you a little bit more about these two aspects. Regarding AOX, that is chlorinated organic compounds, uh, which are formed during bleaching with chlorine dioxide. And they don't easily decompose in nature, and some of them are toxic or carcinogenic, and they may have a negative impact on the pulp and its surroundings. And when the AOXs are formed, it can look something like this. Either uh, elemental chlorine, hypochlorous acid, or chloride ion reacts with lignin or hexuronic acid in the pulp and for many different types of AOX compounds. At SEA Östrand, which is the pulp mill that I've been working with, um, they last used chlorine dioxide in the bleaching uh, during the 1990s. Uh, and the AOX levels were quite high back then. Uh, so uh, during a few years, no chlorine dioxide was used in the bleaching and no AOXs were formed. But since a few years back, Astana started to use chlorine dioxide in, in the bleaching again. And um, the AOX levels are quite low, but they're still existing. And you should remember here that even though uh, the discharges per ton of pulp, which these figures gives, uh, they are low, but the pulp mill has also grown in, in production capacity so that the total AOX load may still be large. And it was the possibility of increased AOX formation at Öhrstan, which was the driving force behind this study. And there are already some methods on how to reduce AOX formation. Of course, you can reduce the amount of chlorinating agent, but you can also re reduce the incoming lignin content in the pulp. The method that we've been working with involves increasing the pH uh, in the D stage uh, to control which type of reactions occur. Another approach to um, 
control um, or to improve the bleaching process is to improve the bleachability. And the bleachability means how easily a pulp sample is bleached. And what gives a good bleachability that depends on a couple of things. Um, the bleaching sequence, the treatment history of the pulp, but also the pulping condition, which has been the, an area of much research. But the focus of paper two, that was the effect of varying denification, or how much lignin that remains in the pulp after the cook. So here's a map over SEA Östrand, which is the pulp mill that I've been working with. And they recently started a new production line of softwood craft pulp. And in the bleach plant, uh, they can produce both ECF and TCF bleached pulp. And those concepts are quite important. ECF stands for elemental chlorine free, which means that you don't use any elemental chlorine in the bleaching process, but you can use uh, chlorine dioxide. TCF stands for totally chlorine free, which means that you don't use any chlorine containing chemicals at all in the bleaching. Recently, however, there's a new type of bleaching uh, sequence called ECF light, which combines ECF and TCF. Uh, so you can use a little bit of chlorine dioxide, which gives high selectivity and efficiency and combine it with oxygen based chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide. And the focus of this thesis has been the ECF light bleaching sequence at Östrand. So it looks like this. Um, and after the cook, there are double oxygen stages, a metal chelating stage, which removes metals, OP, which uses uh, oxygen and hydrogen peroxide, D stage, which uses chlorine dioxide, and then PO, which uses hydrogen peroxide and oxygen. And the aim of this research or this thesis has been to contribute to the process development of this particular ECF light sequence. And I've actually found no published work covering this sequence for sulfur craft pulp. So basically we need more knowledge on how to reduce the environmental impact while we have a low cost and high quality of the pulp. And my research aims at filling this research gap by looking at these three objectives. So starting with the first one in paper one, uh, the objective was to reduce the AOX formation in the D stage uh, by changing the pH profile. And if you remember the sequence, it's in the third stage that we use chlorine dioxide, which can produce AOX. And as I said, we use the pH profile to control the reactions. And this is what a pH profile during the D stage might look like. Traditionally, we have the red curve, with high initial pH that rapidly decreases uh, when acids are formed in the reactions. At, that, at this high initial pH, we have formation of ions that we don't like. For example, we can have chlorate ions, which consumes chlorine dioxide, or hypochlorite ions, uh, which attacks cellulose as well as lignin, since it is an unselective bleaching chemical. However, we need a high initial pH so that we don't end up at a too low final pH. Because the lower the pH, the more hypochlorous acid and elemental chlorine you get. And they are the main causes of AOX formation. So there's a problem at high pH and there's a problem at low pH. And instead, it has been suggested that the D stages should be performed at near neutral pH by the use of a buffer, which would be the green curve. So our idea is that we will use the green curve and help avoid the reactions that form AOX and favor bleaching efficiency. And this is what we call a near neutral PhD stage. And this technique has already been studied first by Yang and Berry, and then by Ribeiro and co-authors. And then it was also implemented in Canada by FB Innovations by colleagues to Yang and Berry. Um, However, the goal in those cases was to improve brightness gain, and they were looking at hardwood, and none of them were measuring AOX. So that's what's new in, in our study. So moving on to the experimental part, uh, we collected the starting pulp from SEA Östrand. Um, this pulp was already bleached with oxygen and hydrogen peroxide, and we simulated these stages in the lab according to these uh, conditions that you see in the slide. 
And we use two chlorine dioxide charges and they correspond to two different brightnesses, uh, brightness targets that you can see in the table. Uh, the pH buffer that we chose was carbon dioxide, or rather when you dissolve carbon dioxide in water, you get a bicarbonate buffer system looking like the one in the figure. And bicarbonate buffer has a pKa at 6.4, which means that it's a good chemical fit for the near neutral PhD stage. CO2 is also a cheap gas that is convenient to use in industrial scale. And we also used two charges of, of CO2 uh, and compared it with the reference case when no buffer was added, as you can see in the table. After the lab bleaching, we did pulp and effluent analysis according to the listed methods. And I will now show you some of the results. In this figure, we have the kappa numbers. And kappa number is a measurement of how much lignin there is in the pulp. And as you can see from the figure, we have more higher kappa numbers after the near neutral PhD stage than for the references. So if you compare the green markers uh, that are the near neutral PhD stage with the black markers that are reference, you can see that the kappa numbers are higher for the green ones. And this is just what we expected since there would be more the lignifying reactions uh, at lower pH, which, which we have in the reference case. And the kappa number also correlates very, very well with the chlorine dioxide consumption. So we would have a lower chlorine dioxide consumption at near neutral pH, since it, we would have more chloride ion formation. So lower chlorine dioxide consum consumption and higher kappa number. And here we have the brightness results. And in this study, we did not achieve a brightness gain uh, for the near neutral pH. Uh, so if you compare the green markers to the black ones, you see that the brightness levels are the same. Uh, however, we did obtain the same brightness, but to a lower chlorine dioxide consumption. We also got a slightly higher limiting viscosity. And this is probably because we avoided the high initial pH of this red curve that I showed you. Uh, where we would have hypochlorite ion formation. And they can attack cellulose and thereby uh, reduce the viscosity and possibly the fiber strength. And in this slide, we will have the exciting AOX results. And in the first figure, I plotted all of the measured triplicate data. And you can see that the data has a large variance. So instead I calculated the mean values and I plotted with the confidence intervals in the lower figure. <clears throat> and here you can actually see an indication that the near neutral PhD stage can reduce the AOX formation with up to 30%. And this trend is uh, more consistent for the lower chlorine dioxide charge than for the higher charges. Uh, but for both of the charges, we can say that a near neutral PhD stage can reduce the AOX formation with up to 30%. So it works, my colleagues are happy. We then decided to measure the hexa content. Uh, and hexa is short for hexaronic acid, which is a side group that's formed during the craft pulping uh, from the silent chain. And hexa is a bad guy when it comes to bleach pulp because it causes yellowing among other things. But it can be removed to some extent by a D stage. And in the results that we have here, we see that we have removed more hexa in the near neutral PhD stage than for the reference ones. And earlier work has actually shown that hexa reacts uh, mainly with elemental chlorine and is turned into AOX compounds, a reaction that could look something like this. And since we would have less elemental chlorine at near neutral PhD stage, we would have a lower hexa degra degradation. And this is supported by the correlation with AOX formation. So in the cases when we've removed more hexa, we've also had more AOX formation. So for a near neutral PhD stage, we have more hexa and it seems to correlate with AOX formation. And since hexa is known to cause brightness reversion, we decided to test the thermal yellowing of our samples. And here you can see the brightness losses during this thermal treatment. And as we expected, more hexa 
gives more brightness to version. And this is not at all new knowledge, but it's important to report this since the brightness reversion is a drawback for the near neutral PhD stage. However, we can, since this is not the final bleached pulp, we can use the other stages in the sequence and design them to remove the higher amounts of hexa that remains. So to summarize paper one, we've looked at a method to reduce the AUX formation in the D stage by changing the pH profile. And it seems that a near neutral PhD stage can reduce the AUX formation with up to 30% with a slightly better viscosity as a bonus. But the reduction in AUX seems to be related to a lower degradation of hexa, which will cause more brightness reversion. So I will now briefly present paper number two. And in this paper, we wanted to evaluate the bleachability of this ECF light sequence. And the parameter that we decided to vary was the unbleached kappa number. And this is because earlier work has shown that it does have a significant impact on the bleachability, but also because it influences the pulp mill economy uh, with higher unbleached kappa number being uh, connected to higher yield. And when I started working with bleachability, I realized that there are many different definitions in the literature, and I would have to find a definition that suited this study. And these are the definitions that I've been working with. Uh, I call them the lignifying bleachability and brightness gain bleachability. The delignifying bleachability, that is defined as how many kappa number units can be reduced for every kilo of bleaching chemical per stage. So how much lignin can one kilo reduce? In a stage. The brightness gain bleachability, that is defined as how many brightness units can we gain for every kilo of bleaching chemical in a stage. So how much brightness can we get from one kilo in a stage? And the idea with using these definitions is that we can study each stage separately. Instead of look, uh, calculating a total bleachability value, uh, we can look at it stage by stage. And in this study, we uh, collected three unbleached uh, pulp samples from Ausland uh, with kappa numbers 27, uh, 32, and 35. We then did oxygen delignification in the lab, all to a 60% degree of delignification. And then we bleached them to full brightness in the lab. We did the uh, pulp analysis according to this list, and uh, we calculated the bleachability. And I've picked some highlights of the results to show you. And in this figure, we have both the kappa number and the brightness development uh, during the fiber line of the three samples. And we can see that the kappa numbers are gradually reduced and the brightness is consistently increased, just as it should be in a balanced sequence. So far, so good. In the second figure, we have the viscosity plotted versus the brightness. Uh, and that is to follow the selectivity throughout the fiber line. And for the most part, the samples follow the same reduction patterns. However, it was a little bit unexpected to find that at full brightness over here, it was the kappa number uh, with 35 um, that was the lowest viscosity. We would expect that a higher kappa number would give higher viscosity of the cooking and that it would survive throughout the bleaching. However, this didn't happen. Uh, it seems that K35 requires too much bleaching chemicals in order to catch up in brightness and delignification. So that possibly we have viscosity and fiber strength losses. We saw the same thing for the yield. Um, a higher kappa number would give a higher yield after the cooking. Um, and it did, as we see, saw in this study, but our sequence couldn't preserve the, uh, the yield gains. And here we have the bleachability results. Uh, and remember here that a higher bleachability value means better bleachability. So we wanna be far out here on the x-axis. And in this figure, we see how the unbleached kappa number affects the lignifying bleachability. 
And for some of the stages, for example, the OP stage, it's clear that it's beneficial with a lower unbleached kappa number since it's tilted in this direction. But for some of the stages, for example, oxygen and D stage, it's beneficial with a higher unbleached kappa number since it's tilted in this direction. So for the, the lignifying bleachability, we can say that in the stages that are mainly supposed to be the lignifying, as the oxygen and D stage, it's beneficial with a higher unbleached kappa number. In the second figure, we have uh, how the unbleached kappa number affects the brightness gain bleachability. And uh, for most of the stages, it's beneficial with a lower unbleached kappa number since they're tilted in this way, especially for the OP and the PO stage. So for the brightness gain bleachability, we can say that in the stages that are mainly brightness increasing, such as OP and PO, it's beneficial with a lower unbleached kappa number. So to summarize paper two, we have provided information on how bleachability behaves in our sequence. And we've looked at what could be the best suitable kappa number out of the three that we tried. And it seems that kappa number around 32 is the best since it gave the best uh, results in regards to brightness, ceiling, viscosity, and yield. So the conclusions of my thesis are as follows. Using a pH buffer to stabilize the pH at near neutral during a D stage can lower the AOX formation without altering bleaching efficiency. And the reduction of, in AOX seems to be related to a lower degradation of hexa. And the increased pH reduced the chlorine dioxide consumption, which resulted in higher kappa number and viscosity. The delignifying and brightness gain bleachability can be used to separately evaluate bleachability in the stages in a sequence. And for this particular sequence, we see that a higher umbridge kappa number is beneficial to the delignifying bleachability, but a lower umbridge kappa number is beneficial for the brightness gain bleachability. And it seems that a kappa number around 32 is uh, best for this sequence out of the three that we tried. Um, so I've listed some activities here that I would like to continue working on in a continuation. Um, there's still many aspects that we can look into. Regarding the near neutral PhD stage, um, it would be interesting to look at these stages placed somewhere else in the sequence, in the beginning or the end. Uh, also greater chlorine dioxide charges or the starting pH. And um, it would be interesting to look at which chlorinated compounds are actually formed in the effluents to see the actual influence on the pulp mill surroundings. But after some lab, additional lab studies, it would be really interesting to test this in uh, industrial scale to see if it works in a pulp mill and just not in the lab. Regarding the bleachability, uh, we could try other sequences than the uh, one at Ostrand. And also other parameters could be varied than the unbleached kappa number. Uh, for example, the kappa number after oxygen or OP stage. We could also vary the chlorine dioxide charges. Um, it might be that uh, the lighter the ECF, the lower the optimal unbleached kappa number. And something I would really like to do is to look into um, uh, the chemical structures and see uh, if there are correlation between the structures and the bleachability. Uh, for example, what type of lignin bonds or lignin carbohydrate complexes uh, give better bleachability. So as we reach uh, the end of my talk, I want to thank, first of all, my supervisors, Johan and Per at Mid-Sweden University, Mikael and Olena at the Royal Institute of Technology, and Maria and Peter at uh, SEA. I've received uh, financial support from the Knowledge Foundation, uh, Bododin Stiftelse, and support from TreeSearch. And I also want to thank my colleagues at SCR and Center and Astrand, and especially the members of the Fiber and Biomass Technology Group, and uh, colleagues in the FURIC network. So as I mentioned, I have an er errata list, which are errors in the thesis that has already been printed. Uh, today is a, is a Monday, it's not a Friday, 
and we are in a different uh, room <laughs> that was printed. <laughs> uh, paper number two has now been accepted and not only uh, submitted. And I have uh, mixed the terms intrinsic and limiting viscosity. It's actually the same thing, but I should have used limiting viscosity all through. On page number 30, I should not have included Lingling in this sentence. Um, thank you for your attention. Hmm.